Hi everyone, Dr. O'Neill here. Welcome to Grow Gray Matter. In this video, I want to help you understand the muscle terms that are needed to describe muscles based on the parts or regions of the body where you will find them. Let's jump right in. So first we have brachial. So your brachium is your upper arm. Two key examples here would be the biceps brachii on the front of the upper arm and the triceps brachii on the back of the upper arm. Next we have scapular. So scapular is going to describe the region that the scapula or your shoulder blade is in. Key example here would be the levator scapulae muscle which elevates the scapula. Next we have carpi or carpus, which means your wrist. So there are tons of muscles that control the wrist. First thing I think of is carpe diem, seize the day. What do you seize the day with? Your hands, your wrists. So carpi, carpus means wrist. So key example here would be the flexor carpi ulnaris, which flexes the wrist on the ulnar or pinky finger side of the forearm. Next we have femoris. Femoris means thigh. So two key examples. We have the rectus femoris, which is a muscle that's part of your quadriceps, your thigh muscles on the front, and you have the biceps femoris, which is part of your hamstrings on the back. Next we have psoas. Psoas means of the loins. This is going to be a loin muscle that connects your low back to your hip and pelvis. The psoas major would be the key example here. Radial versus ulnar. Just remember that the radius is always on the thumb side of your forearm, whichever position your hand is in. So when you think radial, think thumb side of the forearm ulnar, think ulnar side or pinky finger side of the forearm. So key examples here would be flexor carpi radialis and flexor carpi ulnaris. Capitus versus cervicus. So capitus means head, cervicus means neck. So the key examples here would be the splenius capitus muscle. So splenius means bandage. So imagine like wrapping an ace bandage around the back of your head. That would be the splenius capitus muscle. And then splenius cervicus would be the bandage-like muscle that wraps around the back of your neck. So capitus means head, cervicus means neck. Another key term in this region is temporal, which means around the temporal bone and the temple. The key muscle here would be the temporalis muscle. So the temporalis muscle, along with the masseter here, between your maxilla and mandible, are your two primary muscles of mastication. So clench your teeth together and you'll feel the temporalis muscle contract here and the masseter contract here. So that's the temporalis muscle in the temporal region. Ocular versus oris. So ocular, think binoculars, think oculars on your microscopes. So ocular, think eye. Oris, think orator or an oral exam or an oral report. Oris, think mouth. So the orbicularis oculi is a circular muscle around the eye, whereas the orbicularis oris is a circular muscle around the mouth. Hallux versus pollux. Usually when we're talking about your fingers and toes, we just use terms like phalanges and digits. But the great toe or the big toe and your thumb get special names. So hallux means great toe or big toe. Pollux means thumb. Here's how I keep the two straight. When you're walking down the hall, you're using your feet. Hallux, big toe. 
when you're taking a poll, I think thumbs up, thumbs down. So pollux means thumb. So key muscle examples, flexor hallucis longus will be the long muscle that flexes your great toe if you're scrunching your toes together. And flexor pollicis longus would flex your thumb here. Flexor pollicis longus. Next term is lumbar. So lumbar means loin, think low back. So the key muscle example here would be the quadratus lumborum muscle. So quadratus tells us it's a rectangle or square-shaped muscle. Quadratus lumborum tells us it's in the lumbar region. So the QL, or quadratus lumborum muscle, is a critically important muscle because it helps connect the low back to your pelvis. So lumbar and the quadratus lumborum muscle. Popliteal, or popliteus, means behind the knee. So the popliteus muscle is a small muscle behind the knee. Now, it doesn't generate a lot of force. It doesn't play a major role in bending or straightening your knee, but it does unlock the knee so that it can bend, and then it locks the knee once it's straightened. So that's the popliteus in the popliteal region behind the knee. Then lastly, we have the tibial. So the tibia would be your shin, is what I would think of. So the tibialis anterior is a muscle in front of the tibia that's used for dorsiflexion. If you were walking on your heels, you'd be using the tibialis anterior muscle. We also have a tibialis posterior muscle behind the tibia as well. I hope this information helped. I hope that it helps prepare you to understand the muscle terminology enough to truly grasp the muscles, where they are and what they do. And I hope you continue to know more and learn more so you can be more and make the world a better place. Have a wonderful day. I want to share with you my 10 second productivity master plan that can help each and every one of you get from where you are to where you want to be. So get your pen and paper ready. Step one, sleep when you can. Step two, caffeine for when you can't. And step three, we I never get up. Now go change the world.